Kaylee Rose from Missouri just had this like incredible, incredible, incredible voice. I never thought in a million years that I would ever have this job. In my head, it just didn't seem like it was even a possibility. It's hard leaving such a small town and coming to such a big place. I got dropped because I just wasn't making money for them. I ran out of money and moved back home with my parents. I was just kind of like, I wonder if this is really for me. I first moved to LA. I went to a gay bar and fell in love with the go-go dancers there. It's called Pink Pony Club. She sees her baby girl. I know she's gonna scream. God, what I miss um, frolicking. Don't be a freak to me in public. I don't want whatever the f you think you're supposed to be entitled to when you ever see a celebrity. I don't give a f if you think it's selfish of me to say no for a photo or for your time or to for a hug. This is hot. Shut the f up. And it just says to remind myself that this is why I do it. I can see you and feel you. I needed this so bad when I was 15. Let's get into it. <laughs> Growing a business is no small task, but Shopify is here to make it easier. Whether you're launching your very first product or managing an established brand, Shopify provides all the tools you need to sell anywhere, from your online store to your physical pop-up and even directly on social media. With a single dashboard, you can manage orders, inventory, and customer data seamlessly. Grade your business and get the same checkout we use with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash sloan, all lowercase. Go to Shopify shopify.com slash sloan to upgrade your selling today shopify.com slash sloan chapel roan has worked so hard on her project to achieve this amount of success and have her songs dominate the charts but with a few posts on social media and some controversial cancellations it looks like chapel's rise to fame might come to an end so let's get into it This year was a lot of people's first time hearing about Chapel Roan. I must admit, I did not know her before the Pink Pony Club, but I do appreciate her music. Either way, she's been going through it lately, so I thought we should just go through a timeline of her rise and fall and rise and fall and kind of her struggles dealing with fame and trying to make it in this industry. She's been putting out music for over a decade. I believe she's 26 or 7 right now, drawing on her small town Missouri upbringing to deliver a love letter to the Midwestern and Southern LGBTQ. LGBTQ community. Now, in 2014, Chapel got her start on YouTube, like a lot of people, including people like Justin Bieber, Nikki Heaton, who I want to talk about soon. But yeah, Chapel Roan, she started on YouTube like a lot of just normal people would. Now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Not me trying to act like I even know the lyrics like this, but well, it sounds great. Who am I to keep you down? 2014, okay. It's only right that you should play the way you feel. Okay, so she sounds great. Like many Gen Z and young millennial artists, Chapel got her start sharing music on YouTube as Kaylee Rose, a teenager living in the small town of Willard, Missouri. Shout out Willard, comment below if you guys are from Willard. She began uploading covers before sharing her original song, Die Young, in November 2014. Although Chapel looks back on this song, Die Young, and she cringes, she feels like it's corny, it really gave her her start. Because then artists like Troy Sivan started to notice her in 2014, pretty shortly after she started covering stuff on YouTube. He wrote, this is her Twitter, Kaylee Rose. Let's blow up Kaylee because I haven't heard a voice like this since Adele, no exaggeration. And it's especially sweet shout out given that Troy got his start on YouTube as well. At that point, Chapel actually thanked Troy for the shout out because she received over 15,000 views on YouTube, which seems like such a small number compared to where she's at now. My first ever manager, and I have no idea how he found her, Kaylee Rose from Missouri? Yeah. Missouri. Um, she just had this like incredible 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 voice and he sent her song called die young to me um and he was like hey i think i'm about to sign this like i think she was like 14 or something i have no idea um i think i'm about to sign this, this girl and i was just like completely completely blown away could not believe um her vocal ability i was just like this is she's unbelievable 
Now that following year, 2015 in May, is when Chapel Roan was born. She actually signed with a record label, Atlantic Records, and put out a mini documentary. Now this little mini documentary includes a song, The Strawberry Roan, which is a classic country song. Actually, it plays tribute to her late grandfather, Dennis Chapel, whose favorite song was The Strawberry Roan, which I'm already like, okay, there's her name, Chapel Roan. Chapel always said, people would ask me if I had a plan B when it comes to her music career. She she said her grandfather never asked, he just knew I could do it. Let's react to a little clip from her documentary. I never thought in a million years. Oh my gosh, this seems like a horror film. That I would ever have this job. In my head, it just didn't seem like it was even a possibility because I live in Willard, Missouri. There's 5,000 people there. There's more cows than people. I mean, there is definitely like a, a nice humbleness to this story too. Everyone wants to see like the underdog win and nobody really cares for a Nepo baby. We have enough of them. Whenever I go back home, I like to be around my family and I mostly just watch YouTube and play Wii with my friends. And then when I'm by myself, sometimes I play Sims, so. We love a good Sims shout out, it's too real. It's hard leaving such a small town and coming to such a big place. Shoot, so even back then she was expressing the difficulties of leaving her small town and going to a big city. It's daunting. After signing with the label, Chapel actually missed her senior year of high school to focus on music. She said, I didn't miss high school at the time, but I missed my youth. I mourned being a kid because my career took that away from me pretty immediately when I signed. And she did sign to a real record label and she put out a real EP. It was titled School Nights with five songs, Die Young, Good Hurt, Mean Time, Sugar High, and Bad For You. She said, sonically, I'd say that it's a very dark pop album with some influences of the 60s and 70s. She said, I used to be very witchy, dark, and serious. I was just emo and wanted to be a witch. And this EP was intended to tap into that darker, more moody aspects of Chapel. Through 2017 and into 2018, she started to book her first opening gigs. It wasn't anything like we see nowadays. To give you guys an idea, here's a clip of the type of gigs she was doing, which I love. I love small venues, getting close to artists, especially being out here in LA. I get so lucky with so many like small cool niche artists so i actually really appreciate her performing in a gym at a school although chapel roan wanted to put out this dark and moody album she actually didn't like it in hindsight because when it came to performing it was sad i mean there's a huge crowd and then everyone's like you know they want to cry because your music is so depressing that led to the release of her song pink pony club released in april 2020 it's interesting because i did not find her in 2020 but i definitely found her over this song which was about her being raised up in the midwest and then moving to west hollywood to la actually i love that they name drop west hollywood because that's where i'm at i first moved to la i went to a gay bar and fell in love with the go-go dancers there and decided i need to write a song about it because it was so awesome um it's called pink pony club what has become an anthem for gay clubbing and discovering oneself within the queer community was released in April 2020. This was at the height of COVID, so nobody was out listening to this. And actually, Chapel revealed she, that her label didn't even want to release that song at the time. So she had to fight for the song to come out, which means that the record label isn't going to promote it. And it's sad that this label did not believe in this song at that time. Maybe the world wasn't ready for it, but it's such a hit now. If you look at videos of her performing that song a few years ago and videos of her performing it now i'm sure the record label is regretting everything she sees her baby girl i know she's gonna scream girl what have you done you're a pink pony girl and your dad's at the club oh mama and while Pink Pony Club was a song that they ended up putting out, the record label wasn't happy with Chapel, and they decided to drop her. The same week that her record label dropped her, her partner of four years broke up with her. So a lot of loss to hit Chapel at one time, at a time where everyone was so unsure. I got dropped because I just wasn't making money for them. Neither was, neither were most artists. 
unless you are massive. So many artists lost their jobs. Was there a part of you after that that goes, I don't know if I'm going to make music anymore? Yeah. I mean, I ran out of money and moved back home with my parents and uh, was working the drive through and... Oh, chat, that's, so, that's hard. Yeah, but that's like most people. Like, most people, like, work oh, yeah. horrible jobs, it's, you know? W- sorry, uh, working at the drive through is not hard. Mm-hmm. Getting signed to a record label, moving to L.A., being promised this whole other life, and then having to move home sounds challenging to me. Yeah, it was. It was. And I was just kind of like, I wonder if this is really for me. I just didn't have a guiding, there was nothing guiding me. I didn't know what to do. I knew I liked how Pink Pony Club made me feel, but I didn't know how to access that feeling again because I wrote it when I was at a club, when I was around people, when I was having a great time. So I moved back to LA in October of 2020 and I said, I'm going to give it one more year. I'm going to give it one shot. If I don't like it by October 2021, I'll move back. But let me just try to give it a shot. She ended up leaving L.A. and moving home to Missouri, where she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She started to piece her life back together while working at a drive through coffee chain. In 2021, she moved back to L.A. and found work as a nanny and a production assistant. She was quoted saying, I was like, I have to give this a shot. One more year. If I effing hate L.A. and I make no money for music, then I'm going to move forward to uh, Nashville or something or go to school because obviously this is not for me. It kind of worked out though. Running a business means juggling everything, sales, marketing, inventory, and customer relationships. But with Shopify, you have the ultimate partner to simplify it all. Shopify helps you sell your products anywhere, whether it's through your website and store or across social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Manage every order, track customer data, and handle payments effortlessly with one powerful dashboard. And the secret weapon, ShopPay, a fast, secure checkout process proven to increase conversion rates up to 50% helping you turn those window shoppers into loyal customers. It's no surprise that Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., helping entrepreneurs around the world from small businesses to big brands thrive in the competitive marketplace. This is your chance to unlock your business's full potential with Shopify. Grade your business and get the same checkout we use with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash sloan all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash Sloan to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash Sloan. Now in 2021, Chapel went independent and she worked with a producer named Dan who actually put together Pink Pony Club back in 2020. Dan had recently blown up due to his work on Olivia Rodrigo's debut album, Sour, which gave Dan a lot of credibility in the space, a perfect opportunity to bring someone like Chapel in. Chapel described going independent as the best thing she could have done for her career. And because of this connection with Dan, she started to get more opportunities like going and opening for Olivia Rodrigo, which gave her a lot of exposure. She said, being independent lit a fire under my ass. I always did what I wanted to, which is like release music whenever I wanted to, dress however I wanted to, open for Olivia. She said, damn, I was meant to do this. It's working because I'm not with a label, which I feel like being an independent artist is probably the best way to go. You get to avoid all those nasty music executives who see you as a cash cow. How'd you end up on a song with Olivia? Like, is that just- Well, because we work, we all work out of the same studio and Dan is like, are you free right now? Can you come help? And so I just like go over there and sing harmonies because it's like really nice in a song to have kind of different tones. And she's very like, I love that she's open to having like another vocalist. And it's just, she's so sweet to me. Now, being independent worked for Chapel at first, but at some point she started to grow too big to be an independent artist. In 2023, she signs with Amusement Records. She said, it got to a point where I could not be a totally independent artist anymore. This project is too big, which she refers to Chapel Roan as a project project. I have mixed feelings about that, but um, I can't do it alone with with my friends anymore, so I re-signed in January. In February 2023, she kicks off her first headline tour, Naked in North America. Each of the tour's 20 sold-out stops had their own dress-up themes for the concert goers, which is pretty cool that everyone would dress up for the show, which I think just gets everyone more and more excited who doesn't like to dress up. She shared it was a really great way to engage the local queer community and encourage people to tip the queens that's redistributing funds within the community there. It also just gives a platform for drag queens which she's a big fan and advocate of drag queens which we love the queens we do i just love drag so much and i think it shows like in yes, ways up here just because this is drag yeah this is definitely <laughs> drag she's about to dance the house down in this number yes! drag queens drag kings are the most beautiful people in the world i just think drag is like truly my version of seeing a disney princess when i was six like oh. i look at drag queens and i'm like oh my god we didn't need to cover <laughs> nothing else 
Later that year in 2023, she released her album, which pretty much made her career, titled The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. Chapel claims that she's got a ton of influence from a bunch of different people. I've always felt like she kind of gives me Lady Gaga energy, but she really refers to the drag queens. And I think that once she started getting into drag culture, she started to call Chapel Roan a project because it was her way of almost dissociating from this fame that she had built it's something she wants but something that she oddly doesn't want to claim a drag queen opened for me in london named crayola she was like oh you are a drag queen and i was like that was the first time i'd ever been told that what, what, what did they mean by that i was just getting ready and like my makeup wasn't done yet and and i was like oh you know i'm like you i i need to get my makeup and my clothes on and kind of transform them and she was like honey you are a drag queen you're not just getting makeup on, you're a drag queen. And I was like, oh my God. Like that was very altering. Like that, there was something that switched. I really have taken that on as an identity. Um, and it's been very freeing to be like, oh, Chapel Roan is a drag, is my drag project. And I think that's also helped personally to separate it as a job and as like a project. And then there's me as Kaylee. Now, after she did her independent tour, she opened for Olivia Rodrigo and she really blew up. This wasn't the first time that she appeared on Olivia's tour, but she was a main headliner. And I really think that her getting on the ground earlier this year in 2024 is why people love her and Olivia's fan base you don't play with them they are loyal and in between her tour dates with Olivia she would go and stop at the late show with Stephen Colbert and getting these really great opportunities that solidify her stardom so I think it happens really really fast I mean I feel like from where we started in this video yeah there's been a lot of time but this jump this 2023 2024 is superior. I mean, she really went to the next level going on late night television. Good Look Babe was released in April 2024, which was, quote, the first song of the next chapter. And I actually really love this song, too. When you wake up next to him in the middle of that, that one, middle of the night with your head, I don't even know the lyrics, and your hands and you're nothing more than his wife. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad at figuring out what lyrics mean. I have to go to that genius website every time. In April, we saw Chapel Roan at Coachella. She performed on one of the big stages, so this was a huge opportunity for her. H-O, why is no one doing it? Can take me hot. One more time. H-O-T-T. -T. Oh, you guys are gay. Now, by summer 2024, it's safe to say that Chapel Roan is everywhere. We've got our uncles, our aunts, our grandparents asking, who's that uh, Chapel Roan or whatever they want to say, however they mispronounce it. And sometimes when a celebrity is everywhere, it's kind of like a, setting them up for failure. Once you reach that certain height, you must come down. In August 2024, Chapel put out some boundaries, some public boundaries for her fans to stop creeping and stalking on her, which was received by a lot of people, and certain people had feelings about her standing up for herself. While I do think celebrities should do this more often, a lot of people felt like she was being ungrateful. She called out the predatory behavior disguised as a super fan that has become normalized because of the way women who are well-known have been treated in the past. I miss, um... Frolicking, obviously, because now I'm self conscious to frolic. And came up and they're like, I was coming up from the somersault. And I was like, and they're like, Are you Chapel Roan? And I was like, No. And they were like, Well, can we get a photo with you? Just and, in case. Yeah. And, and the girl was like, like, Did this? And she was like, It's not her. Don't ask for a photo. And I was like, It's me. And I, and I was just like, The most I feel like you. Are you Don't be a freak to me in public. And also, yes, um, please. Let her frolic. Let me let somersault. Her, let her frolic. For God's sake. <laughs> but she put out this statement. For the past 10 years, I've been going nonstop to build my project. And it's come to the point that I need to draw lines and set boundaries. I want to be an artist for a, I want to be an artist for a very long time. I've been in too many non-consensual physical and social interactions. And I just need to lay it out there and remind you, women don't owe you anything. 
I chose this career path because I love music and art and honoring my inner child. I do not accept harassment of any kind because I chose this path, nor do I deserve it. She goes on, when I'm on stage, when I'm performing, when I'm in drag, when I'm at work, when I'm doing press, I am at work. Any other circumstance, I am not in work mode. I am clocked out. I don't agree with the notion that I owe a mutual exchange of energy, time, or attention to people I do not know, do not trust, and who creep me out just because they're expressing admiration. Women do not owe you a reason why they don't want to be touched or talked to. This has nothing to do with the gratitude and love I feel for my community, for the people who respect my boundaries, and for the love I feel from every person who lifts me up and has stuck with me to help the project to get to where it is now. I'm specifically talking about predatory behavior disguised as super fan behavior that has become normalized. If you're still asking, well, if you didn't want this to happen, why did you choose a career where you knew you wouldn't be comfortable with the outcome of success? She says, I understand this. I embrace the success of the project the love I feel and the gratitude I have. What I do not accept are the creepy people being touched or being followed. And I can agree with that. Please don't do that. I, I actually had someone recently, I'm not even gonna tell the story because I'm kind of scared this person would see me and do it again. But I had somewhere where someone did grab me and then followed me and it was weird. And it, like they were trying to be nice, but like, and be like fan and friendly, but you know, and I don't even think like if I hate the word fan, but it's not, you know, it was just because I'm friends with everyone who comes out to me in public. But if you like grab my arm and then you keep following me, I'm going to be I'm really freaked out. This situation is similar to the idea that if a woman wears a short skirt and gets harassed or catcalled, she shouldn't have worn that short skirt in the first place. It's not a woman's duty to stick up and take it. It's the harasser's duty to be a decent person, leave her alone, and respect that she can wear whatever she wants and still deserve peace in this world. She says, please stop touching me. Please stop being weird to my family. Please stop assuming things about me. There is always more to the story. I am scared and tired. And please don't call me Kaylee. I feel more love than I ever have in my life. I feel the most unsafe I've ever felt in my life. This is a part of a project that I save just for myself and all of you. This is a part of myself that is just for me and I don't want that taken away from me. Thank you for reading this. I appreciate your understanding and support. Now this was in August and she wrote out this post, which I think was thoughtful. She could have people read it and think about it. And then she decided to respond in a video. And this video rubbed people the wrong way. While I do think that every celebrity should stand up for themselves, I, I mean, the, the public's gonna react how the public is going to react. I need you to answer questions. Just answer my questions for a second. If you saw a random woman on the street would you yell at her from the car window? Would you harass her in public? Would you go up to a random lady and say, can I get a photo with you? And she's like, no, what the fuck? And then you get mad at this random lady? Um, would you be offended if she says no to your time because she has her own time? Would you, would you stalk her family? Would you follow her around? Would you try to dissect her life and bully her online? This is a lady you don't know. Um, and she doesn't know you at all. Would you assume that she's a good person? Assume she's a bad person? Would you assume everything you read about her online is true? I'm a random bitch. You're a random bitch. Just think about that for a second, okay? In a cover story for Rolling Stone, Chapel elaborated on the harassment she's faced over the past few months, including a stalker who's shown up at her parents' home and her hotel room, a man who berated her about not signing an autograph at an airport until police showed up, and a fan grabbing her and non-consensually kissing her while she celebrated a friend's birthday at a bar in August. That's a lot. This person tweeted, Two things can be true. Chapel Roan deserves to be healthy and well and feel safe performing. And then two, oh, they're referring to her dropping out of her gigs. Two, dropping out of all things one day before the festival effing sucks and is really crappy to do to fans who spent a lot of money to see her. Now, this tweet is a few weeks ahead, but essentially she had a bunch of um shows, concerts, jobs that she had to fulfill, but she's recently been calling out of them because she's been receiving a lot of hate because she keeps explaining herself on the internet and then re-explaining herself. And every time she re-explains herself, she just digs her grave deeper and deeper. And it makes me as a viewer, I feel like she she's just struggling to handle all of this public attention, which is sad to see because there's no handbook on this. I gotta shut the f up, she missed the spot.
This person wrote, I wish Chapel Roan could have timed her mental health crisis to benefit me. This is what you guys sound like complaining about her canceling. And I get it. I mean, as someone who goes to a bunch of concerts, if I went and made a bunch of plans to go and see a show, I'm going to be upset. At the same time, we, I don't mean, are you going to cancel her over it? I don't know. I just think that like, maybe you just don't go and see her live because it's a 50-50 chance. Chapel Roan, I literally love you, but girlfriend, that was not cool. And I know that you love being able to speak your mind, therefore I should be allowed to speak mine. Wasn't cool. People spent real money on those tickets. Uh, they were expecting to see you. If I was in their shoes and I heard that you canceled simply because the pressure was too high, girl, you shouldn't be performing in those shows then. You're not ready, okay? So you need to do the smaller venues, not these big massive things, and work on yourself till you can really be a performer. Okay. Keep in mind, guys, Chapel's been open about living with bipolar disorder and severe depression, stating that she needs a few days to prioritize her health before she's back on stage. Days after the festival passed, she got back on the road, performing in Tennessee on Monday, October 1st. During the concert, she once again reaffirmed her connection with the queer and trans people outside of the coast. She said, I know how hard it is to be queer in the Midwest and South. I understand, and I'm so very grateful I can be here. And I just have to remind myself that this is why I do it. I hope you know that you are wanted here and you are welcome here. And I just have to remind myself that this is why I do it, is to like, I can see you and feel you. And like, that's what is important to me. I needed this so bad when I was 15. I felt so completely misunderstood and very alone. And I really, really needed a place where people weren't gonna make fun of me for how I dress or who I liked. And you're welcome here, however you are, Wherever you are in your life, you are loved and you are cherished. So thank you for being here. Sometimes it's hard to hear these things, or maybe you don't hear them at all, but if you hear it right now, you are loved and you are cherished. This reminds me so much of like Lady Gaga and Born This Way and that kind of vibe, which is really great for an artist to find like a niche community and to really advocate for them because then they will show out for her even when she calls out sick. It looks like we're going to see Chapel on the big screen again soon. So if you missed her in concert, you can see her on SNL on November 2nd. Actually, that's the day that I'll be marrying my sister. So. Sorry, Chapel, I won't be watching that. I'm actually so nervous to go and marry her. Like, what the hell? Can you imagine me out there? I'm going to put a, a little clip of it on YouTube in my Sloan show series. So definitely keep a lookout for that. And I'll be in Thailand most of December. So if you have any Thailand recommendations, please email me at sloanwellknown at gmail.com. Mariah Carey recently chimed in, agreeing with Chapel Road's viral thoughts on being famous, saying it is not fun. Mariah discussed her continuous domination of the holiday season. But when asked about thoughts on Chapel Road expressing her frustration, frustrations with fame, Mariah Carey shockingly agreed. She says, well, I've been through my share of dramas. It's not fun because you grow up thinking, I want to be famous. I mean, really with me, I, it was always, I want to be a singer. I want to write songs, which is kind of what Chapel said. Mariah then went on to admit that she was exactly opposed to obtaining fame. She said, but I want to be famous was right there with it. I feel like it was probably because I didn't feel like I was good enough on my own because of the things I went through growing up. And that's not a good way to feel, you know? I do think there's going to be more to Chapel and what happens going forward. I'm glad that she's getting back on the road. Um, nonetheless, getting political was not a great move for her because she's speaking about things that I think a lot of people were like, wait, do you even know what you're talking about? And it's like, I'm not even going to sit here and try to explain it to you guys because I, you know, I'm not qualified for that respect the people who are qualified but i want to hear what you guys think of this video in the comments below are you a big chapel roan fan i'm a little i'm a little disheartened at how many people are going so hard on her because i do feel like you know i mean women just get everything harder they do they just it is it's a thing i have to say it i just have to say it but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in a new one soon bye guys